telecom and HRD minister Kapil Sibal had a news conference today, issued a press statement uh, not long after A. Raja's comments in court. He joins me now. Mr. Sibal, thank you very much. Uh, in your news statement you. today, uh, you said, at the outset, submission by an accused before a court at the time of framing of charges cannot be construed as evidence. I take your point completely, but people will also ask, Mr. Sibal, that A. Raja is someone who, till he was forced to resign, was getting the government support. And just because today he's on in what? political on, bad on weather on and what? because he's in custody, you're washing your hands of him. Who is washing her? We are not washing our hands. This is between the court and the prospective accused. We have nothing to do with it. The CBI has filed a charge sheet. He, as a prospective accused, uh, is entitled to make arguments uh, in his defense. Um, those arguments may be logical, illogical. They may be baseless. Uh, they may have a valid basis. Uh, it's for the court to decide and for any political party or the media to take up what he has argued in court. Uh, and on that basis, consider that to be proof of it. And evidence is, I think, very unfortunate. Let him have his day in court and let the judge decide. Why are we trying to analyze his arguments and uh, present them as truth or present them as evidence no, before, uh, before the people of India? Sir, certainly. No. Just following up from that, Mr. Sibyl, uh, however, there's a context to this. And the Prime Minister's office and his personal correspondence with Mr. Raja clearly indicate that Raja intimated the Prime Minister, in fact, even in so much detail of his plans to advance cut-off dates and change the rules of the game. So besides, there are a number of letters no, written not... to the Prime Minister no, 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 warning no, no, no. him of the impending disaster, which the Prime Minister chose to ignore. No, 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 that's absolutely, that's absolutely untrue and unfair. He never informed the Prime Minister of any cut-off dates. Uh, he already had a cut-off date. This information was much later. Uh, in fact, uh, he didn't inform anybody about the cut-off when he made that decision on the 24th of September. Remember, even the counsel for, the Prime Min uh, counsel for Mr. Raja in court in the afternoon made a statement that the reference to the Prime Minister, the reference to the Prime Minister was only with respect to policy. And there was no allegation or no insinuation that was sought to be made by Mr. Raja on the Prime Minister. That's the counsel for the Mr. Raja clarifying in court. And he said it's the media which had misinterpreted the argument that he had made. And unfortunately, this is exactly what happens. Uh, in court proceedings, people make arguments. And, uh, and that can be the argument that he had made. And unfortunately, this is exactly what happens. Uh, in court proceedings, people make arguments. And, uh, and that can be interpreted in any, any which way you like. And I don't think that's fair. Allow, please, Mr. Raja, to have his day in court. Sure. Please don't insinuate no. Uh, and, and suggest uh, that, that, that he is insinuating against no. anybody. No, he is entitled to make an argument, let the court accept it or not accept it. But as far as your correspondence is concerned, the, the, the allegation of the CBI has nothing to do with policy. The allegation of the CBI is that he did not implement the first come first serve policy as envisaged. But, so it's in the process of implementation hmm. that these no, allegations no, not, have been made by the CBI. No, no, I'm not insinuating, but there is a, you know, since you say there is no such point which has been made, I have two points in two letters. One is December 2007 and the other is an action in a letter dated November 2nd. And the, and the second letter, point number yes. four, it says, now the department, this is all communicated to the Prime Minister, now the right, department right, has right, decided right. to continue with the existing policy first come first serve for processing of applications right. received up to 25th September. Right. The procedure for processing right. the remaining applications will be decided at data late. If spectrum is left available after processing, applications will be received. The oh. other the other letter, he right. also goes on to say it's been concurred by the Solicitor General of India. I think Mr. Gulam Manavati at that point of time during the discussion. So right. the argument can be made, Mr. Sibyl, no, that, that the Prime also, Minister's that, office was kept in the all, loop. On the on the, on the second issue of the Solicitor General, that matter is pending in court. Mm. Because the Solicitor General has given an explanation to that. Please do not involve me in any comment on that, because this is a, something that will have to be decided in court. Okay. As far as the second November letter is concerned, the allegation in the, by the CBI is that he, he decided on the cutoff date to favor somebody. There is nothing wrong with the cutoff date, but he decided to favor somebody.
So the fact that he mentioned to the Prime Minister in a letter that I am going to deal with the other issues, other applications after 24th September in a different manner in the future, there's no wrongdoing in that. So but if there is some element of, element of pref preferential treatment uh, by giving a favor to somebody, uh, uh, by having a particular cut-off date, that's not something that the Prime Minister was aware of. That's something that the CBI see, has, in the course of investigation, found out. Mr. Sibyl, uh, you know, the argument which is made out is more, you know, it's an argument that, in any case, given all of this, it proves the Prime Minister was warned about all of this happening, of this, what is now an impending disaster. Who warned? Disaster. Who warned? Did, the, did Mr. Letters. Radha write to the Prime Minister, I'm warning you? But please, please, no, of course don't not. use those do words. Did the, did the Prime Minister, did, one second, did the, Mr. Radha tell the Prime Minister, I'm warning you that I'm going to do something wrong? So why would he do that? So, would have, why are you saying that he was warned? No, as in he informed. So say that then. You don't use the wrong word. No, no. Don't say warned when you mean informed. No, informed. So what did he inform informed. the Prime Minister? He informed the... One second. He informed the Prime Minister that applications after 24th of September I will deal with later. So what's wrong with that? The entire process, which is now controversial in the manner in which he's going to go through this whole policy, was... Therefore, the Prime Minister's office was informed. And I'm just asking you, Mr. Sibyl, there That's is also a risk. No, uh, one second. No, no, but if the Prime Minister's office... You are, you are now jumping to conclusions. No, 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 I'm not. You are jumping to conclusions. No, Mr. Sibyl, if Prime Minister's office responds by saying uh -huh. we have received your letter, is that just a receipt? Or should the Prime Minister's office have, if it had any objections, laid it out? So every time, every time I write, you know, every time I write to the Prime Minister, the Prime Minister have a follow-up letter to please tell me what is the basis of what you are doing on the ground. Which means I can never do my work in office because I'll keep on responding to the Prime Minister. Unless there is some evidence of wrongdoing, unless the Prime Minister gets to know that Raja has done something to favor somebody, the Prime Minister will say, okay, if you say this to me, I accept it. Don't you, in your organization, if somebody, some reporter or somebody says, I'm doing this and I'm going to do it this way, don't you trust him? No, if I had a problem with him and if I felt there was or something say, ethically wrong, I'd If you had a problem, him. but he had no problem. There was no problem at that time. That problem arose after January 2008. Okay. Mr. Sibyl, my question... And the problem arose with the CAG report. One second. Problem arose with the CAG report when the CAG report gave those calculations. Nobody before that was seeking to prosecute Raja. No, but there was Even request... Even you, your channels did not pick it up. But there was there was request to the Prime Minister seeking sanction to prosecute Raja way back in November 2008. And the reply came so in March 2010. 2008. All this happened. All this was finished in January 2008. And, and, and that request actually came at the instance of the Prime Minister. Because the Prime Minister said, I'm hearing something wrong. Please investigate what's wrong. The FIR was lodged at the instance of the government. No, but other people had also written to the Prime Minister. For example, I think Rajiv Chandrasekhar wrote to the Prime Minister about the non-transparent methods of Raja and that was... No, Rajiv, if you look at the letter, uh, you know, if you want to know the facts, Arnab, if you come to me, I'll give you the letter. There's a letter of Rajiv Chandrasekhar in response to Raja when Raja explained the policy to him. Rajiv Chandrasekhar says, writes and says, I agree entirely with what you're doing. Uh, Sitara Mechuri... If you want a copy of their letter, I'll give it to you. Sitara Mechuri... The Mechuri. problem with journalists... No, no, Sitara is, Mechuri, Mr. Swiss, the problem Mr. with... Mr. Sitara Mechuri, 29th February... No, no, but don't, February. don't, no, no, you talk about... February, one second, you also talk about Chandrasekhar. One second. You, you talked about Chandrasekhar. I'm giving you a response. You want a copy of the letter? I'll give it to you. Sure. I, I'm aware and of that. did the Mr. Yechuri write that... Uh, so then, then why did you ask me the question when no, you know that Chandra, had Chandrasekhar the, had accepted he it? He raised the question... Yeah, but he accepted the explanation of Raja. Uh, that you are saying. He ex accepted the explanation of Raja. Till date, on air... He may have raised it, but he accepted his explanation. But Sitara Mechuri. See, this is... Sitara Mechuri. Don't, 29 February as, 2000. But I don't know exactly. I don't have the letter of Sitaram Yachuri. If you read it to me, I will respond. What did he say? He Please said, to me. I, I mean, he, I think he mentioned, I am quite certain of it, that he wrote on the impropriety on the impropriety of new licenses no, no. under did he, did 2G did he set out the impropriety? First of all, I, please give me the date of the letter. 29 February 2008. 29 February 2008. 29 February. And what did he say? He said the market price of the spectrum allocation in question was six to seven times the 2001 prices, which were fixed through a multi-stage ah. auction at a time so, when there were only so, four million so, subscribers so, so, in India, we, as against 300 so we, million. We go back to the same argument. We go back to the same argument that should you have a first come first serve policy or not? Now, how many times have I answered that? The policy at that time was first come first serve. And if the policy was first come, first serve, ask Mr. Arun Shori. He himself says there's nothing wrong with it. Okay. 
the only thing that went wrong was the way he implemented the policy. So if you have a first come first serve policy, the price will be that. There's nothing wrong with it. Mr. If you have auction as a policy and then you go for first come first serve, then you can say that somebody has lost money. Okay. But Mr. if there's a first come first serve policy, there could have been no auction. Mr. Mr. Sibyl, as another point in the news con in the in the in the press statement today, you say as far as the alleged sale and swall and Unitech are concerned. It is clarified that what occurred was not sale of equity, but issuance of additional equity. It's very smartly phrased, and I'm, I'm sure technically you are right. My simple question to you is this. Simple question, sir. I'm not arguing technically at all. My question is, what would be the value of that equity if it did not have Spectrum backing it? Acha, now I ask you this question, Arnab. What's the value of your television company without investment from outside? Please answer me that. No, what my question sir, you are avoiding my question sir no no i want to answer what is the value of anything without investment you the value of any enterprise will increase with investment either from inside or outside no. there, there, there can be domestic players who invest in it there can be foreign players who invest yeah, but in it the key it. differentiator is the spectrum right? what happens on television what happens on television channels you buy spots on television channels then some investor comes says i have the money let's make a serial you have a spot of 24 episodes you've got it for sudden such amount i'll invest 550 crores or 100 crores we'll make it into a wonderful serial the value of your 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 company will rise and we'll give a wonderful serial to our viewers and everybody makes money so you should send people to jail the same thing happens in any sector of the economy. Take a mining license. You know, under the, under the uh, Mine, Mines and Minerals Regulation and Development Act, you get a license on a first-come, first-served basis. But the person who gets the license is not the investor. No, but if, so if then a, foreign investors come, a, investors in the domestic market come, and they say, okay, now that you have li got the license for speculation uh, 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 in a particular area, we will invest money, uh, we will increase the value of the company, and if we find a mineral, that will increase everybody's uh, value. And you make profit on it, and you are able to then mine the mineral and sell it to the public, and the government gets a royalty on it. This is in every sector of the economy, and I don't know what, what big deal you're making out of it. What is the infraction? You say it's technical. It's not technical. Please tell me which provision of the penal code has he violated or anybody violated. I, my point was what would be the valuation of the equity without the spectrum. That's simple point which I had with spectrum. This, this was has nothing to do with spectrum. Oh, one second. One second. This is nothing. This is not the pricing of spectrum. It is investment in an economic activity which happens in every aspect of economic life in India, in the education sector, in the health sector. How many people get land at institutional rates in the health sector? And then foreign companies come in, domestic companies come in, invest huge amounts of money, make a huge profit and ultimately serve yes. the public. No, and no, some of it free, some of it charging money. Do you say, then don't you ask the question, what was the value when you got that land at institutional rates and what is its value today? There, there will be change of value, no? That's the whole purpose of economic activity. Within unless you months. want to shut down economic activity. No, within 10 months at 10 times. Well, price. it may be within 10 months. It may be in within 10 months. It may be, it depends. If the economic activity is long term, in mining it's long term. But the value will go down, a th go, go up 2,000 times. Whether it's a short term investment, the value will go up 100 or 200. Now, there's a Mr. Simple, we are, we, are we are heading to a parliament session. Economic activity. No, we're heading to a parliament session. Sorry? We're heading to a parliament session. And, and inevitably, yeah. Mr. Sibyl, you are a veteran par parliamentarian and politician as well. You know it will get political. Now, here's the point. The Prime Minister may not have been a beneficiary in the scam. Certainly, he's not a beneficiary. Nobody is suggesting at all the Prime Minister is a beneficiary in the scam. But the charge being put here, very effectively by the opposition What's is... What's the charge? The charge is that he's been a sp silent spectator while the scam has been unfolding. That's no, a but, political but, charge. I mean, I don't want to. I mean, I and, think, and you, I, I the think you know the answer. I know the answer. I have given the answer. I think it's an unfortunate question raised by the opposition. Well, if he is, if he is the so-called silent spectator, I can say that the BJP are active participants in Karnataka. Today you heard the statement of, 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 of uh, ex-chief minister of Himachal Pradesh. What did he say? He said that, look, I told all these leaders in Delhi in the BJP as to what was happening in Karnataka and they never took any action. They are not silent spectators. They are active participants. My Prime Minister is one of the most honest human beings in India. Nobody can ever question his integrity, no matter how much you question it through the media or how much the BJP questions it. The people of India don't believe it.
but the people of India believe that the BJP is deeply involved in Karnataka. And the reason why they can't take action against Yadurappa is because they know and Yadurappa knows what the deals are. Mr. Sipul, why can't these two issues be delinked? You know, I'm just, just curious. You know, in all debates, you have BJP wants to talk about 2G and Congress no, wants to talk about We haven't started it. You know? Who gave the press conference? One second. BJP had a press no, conference. Who gave the press they conference? Press Not conference. us. BJP president made a, gave a press conference on an argument of a prospective accused in court. We had to respond. We had no choice but to respond. And for him, I mean, in, we, I certainly believe that, that on some issues, uh, Mr. Gadkari would be wise to be silent instead of speaking. Because the more he speaks, uh, the more he exposes himself and the party. Uh, of, 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 of playing unprincipled politics. It's not good for everybody. Corruption is not an issue uh, that, that is limited to one party or another. It's a societal issue. And we need to deal with it together. And that's why we're going to have the Lokpal bill as promised, as the Prime Minister promised. We're making a lot of changes, institutional changes, to make sure that we reduce corruption. So corruption is a national issue and we need to deal with it together. Just as terrorism is a national issue and we need to deal with it together. But what happens is that the PJP always tries to score brownie points and then sort of has mud on its face. So let's see, I mean, for a president to come out on the basis of some argument of counsel uh, in court and then to attack and seek the resignation, <laughs> I just don't understand what the politics behind it is unless it is totally thoughtless and unprincipled. The only alternative, Mr. Sibyl, is to get you and Mr. Jaitley and someone on the other side and have a proper debate before Parliament starts. I hope I'll have the opportunity to do that. Mr. Sibyl, thank you very much for talking to me on the news. Hour. Thank, thank you, you very much indeed. Thank, thank you. you.